Hey there, ACC fans. I am telling you all right now, we are not done with the Florida State talk. We have this episode and one more about the exclusion of Florida State from the playoff. And with that being said, I have none other than recruiting expert and Locked On Seminoles host, Brian Smith, on the day. And I'm just going to warn you, Brian may have a take that some of y'all aren't ready for. Brian, you ready to get into this thing, brother? Let's do it. All righty. We'll stick around while we talk about that and a few other things in terms of the way that this playoff will look on today's episode of Locked On ACC. You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, folks. I'm super glad that y'all are out here with us today. And by the way, I know that y'all see that there's a lot less hair on today's podcast than there normally is, but that's because we got my main man. Notice I said hair and not prettiness, okay? Because we this is two fine gentlemen, if I do say <laughs> so myself, and me and Brian Smith. And we're going to get into all things Florida State exclusion from the playoff. But first, I've got to tell you that today's episode is brought to you by the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. So, Brian, you know why I'm here. I know why you're here. We got to get into this thing, brother, because I want to hear your perspective, the perspective of the person who covers the no twenty four seven. What is going on? Do you agree with the committee's decision? Let's just start there. Do you agree with the committee's decision to exclude Florida It's State? the same one I would have made, and I think it's because of how many blowouts there have been mm-hmm. in the playoffs. These TV people influence this probably, I'm mm-hmm. going to guess. They're never going to admit that. Of course, but, of course. I mean, and I, and I get it. But at the same time, Florida State was down to its third-string quarterback, and there's no telling when the second stringer is in concussion protocol yeah. when he's going to be back. Right. And here's and that's rough. That's rough. And, and, and here's my only disagreement with that, right? As far as we know, this is Tate Rodemaker's first concussion, right? When have we ever seen now a week? That's not a shocker for somebody to not clear concussion protocol in a week. That's fine. When have we ever seen somebody off their first concussion be out for a month plus in terms of not having the ability to go anymore? And and show up in this moment of all moments for you know the the team. Not I, likely, not likely, but they're going to. I'm just saying this is how the machine moves. Yeah, yeah, and and I think it's a lot like if somebody, you know, how everybody does the thing where it's like if you want to talk to somebody or whatever, and your friend is trying to posit you as a potential suitor for that person, and they're like, hey, my homeboy would want to talk to you. And, you know, you just call that awkward anger. It's like, oh, my friend want to talk to you. And they show a picture of you where you, like, are straining, doing your job as hard as you can, and you look real crazy. Like, you point the screen, like, and they're like, oh, that's the picture I'm going to use of, like, my homeboys. You talk. No, it's not going to (laughs) work. And the reality is Florida State has put out 12 performances that weren't that. And the one performance that is that seems to be the one that gets judged in this regard because – Objectively speaking, you kind of can't say, oh, Florida State barely beat Tate uh, with Tate Rodemaker, barely beat Florida. So, you know, you you can't let him in based off that, because if that's the case, then Alabama needing a muffed punt and a fourth and goal conversion from the 30 to beat a team that had completed 15 passes all game in Jordan Hare would seem to fall under the same category, would it not? I, I get that because Auburn, um, they're not very good. Um, Should have won. They choked. I mean, yeah. that's not any nice way to say it. The language that they use in the, the bylaws of this committee talk about players being available. So yeah. they have a direct out, and that's just an opinion thing. And there's no, you know, the guy, I forget the guy's name. I don't want to forget, but I, I did. Came on and said, you know, this is a big deal because it's Jordan Travis that's not right. Playing. Book Look, I get the, uh, the but, AD but your State point, State. like, I watched the Auburn-Alabama game from field level. I was, mm-hmm. like, it, other end zone from where the calamity happened at the end. Alabama is very mediocre by Alabama standards, but they always find a way. 
They grind yeah. things out. It's weird. It's not a normal Alabama team. Yeah. Are they going to win the playoff? They could, but mm-hmm. I would not pick them per se yeah. because they also, at some point, you figure they're going to fall off the ledge. I just yeah. think the committee was worried about Florida State falling on its face because they don't know the quarterback. And yeah. I'm not saying that's the best thing. And I mean, the way the defense played against Louisville, that's as good a performance as I saw from a defense this year, period. Absolutely. They destroyed Louisville. Absolutely. Like they couldn't even, they couldn't do anything. Like Louisville has two NFL running backs. They couldn't get nothing going. And that quarterback, you could tell by the end of the first quarter, did not want to be there at yeah. all. Yeah. They, would they have 170, 180, Kenton? Like total. Something I mean, like that. Garbage. Something like that. And, and, and that's their starting quarterback. Yeah. So from that perspective, if you want to throw Florida State in there, by by all means, because they were dope. They were dope. And, and that's that's the problem with me. I think my biggest problem here is the idea that you can only win a football game one way. Listen, oh, yeah, there's yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In, in the words of that uh, old Kid Cuddy song, there's 50 ways to make a record, right? There's there's a, a thousand ways to do this thing. You can win with a high flying offense like Washington's, where every time you look up, Roma Dunsey has a, a cornerback looking at the back of his head, and Penix is gonna hit him. You can win that way. You can win like Michigan wins with an absolutely dominant running game. I mean, you're going to get extra tight ends. You're going to get extra fullbacks. You're going to get no frill downhill. Put your hands up, brother. Let's see what you're made of. You can win in the same way of a Texas in terms of, you know, Quinn yours is the guy. He's going to air it out. He's going to do his thing. And I'll say this. You can even win in the way of an LSU with Jaden Daniels just lighting up the scoreboard, doing everything and a half for a team. But I don't think it's fair to say that this way of winning is less legitimate or makes you a lesser team than there would be otherwise. I, I just don't. There is something that rings very unfair about that to me, because if this were not only if this were another team, but if this were a different type of injury, right? Let's say that there was a Mike linebacker that was the greatest Mike linebacker we ever seen. Put Ray Lewis to shame. I mean, this kid knows where the ball's going before it goes there, runs a 4-2 flat, can bench and squat a house, Right. And that kid were to not be able to play in a conference championship game. And what was the number one defense in the nation then got lit up by an Iowa style offense that could not score on anybody so much so that you got to fire your son type deal. Right. If that team got lit up for 40 points, but they still won the football game, nobody would be saying, "Mm, I'm not sure if we can trust this team. Uh, I don't know what we can do there. You know what I'm saying? So that is kind of what, what, one part of what I don't like, and the other part of what I don't like is this whole narrative that, well, the strength of schedule is bad because the ACC is bad and all this and all that, when it's like the ACC is one of only two Power Five conferences to have a winning out-of-conference record against Power Five teams. And beyond that, you are not doing this. I don't see a world where, you know, Georgia or Alabama go undefeated in the SEC, even if the SEC is having the downest of down years, and they beat a team in the conference championship – that is a top 20 team, one of the most prolific offenses. Let's say they get Ole Miss in the conference championship and they beat that team handily while stopping one of the most high-powered offenses in the nation. And people are saying, well, this isn't a game of good defense. It's just bad offenses throughout. Yeah, I I mean, there's so many ways to look at it. They're good. They were going to catch flack no matter what they did. So – I mean, I stand by the quarterback thing, and that's what they – I don't think their reasoning for using it is 100% the same as mine. Yeah. I still think it's advertisers and all that because it is statistically proven that more eyeballs go on TVs yeah. when the ball's in the air. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and, and that's, that's – and that's. I me, think that's the biggest thing connected with the – they will never admit to that. And, and that to me is like another part of why I'm just like, that's not – the game that I love, the game that I know, the game that I've been around for, I mean, you know, I'm only 28 years old and I've been around again. I know the bald head fools people, but I've been around this thing for 24 of those years. I've been, you know, deeply enthralled with this game ever since I first saw it as a small, small child. For those of you who I'm going to date myself a little bit here, watching ESPN classics, watching the, the you oh. know, sitting in front of the TV and doing all that, watching college game day before they had the, uh, the the theme song that they do now and all that. And it has never been about you've got to win one way. That one way is the way that you got to do it. Listen, okay, 
with all due respect, there's a holy book that tells you there's one way to get to where you're going. Passing ain't a religion. I'm sorry to tell you. It shouldn't be, at least. It should be. I, I, I'm not arguing. We're on the same page there. I'm just, I'm saying that's what I think is a oh, big yeah. part of this. 100%. Now, they're, again, those guys are under a lot of pressure. Yeah. yeah. And they're still trying to make what they see fit and gals, by the way, but they're trying to make what they see fit work. Yeah. They don't want defensive slugouts. Yeah. They don't. That Remember that Alabama LSU game in 2011 that was nine to nine to six? Yeah. God, that was horrible. I no. couldn't watch it. No. Horrible. And you know the interesting thing about that game? NFL players everywhere in that game. Tyron Matthew, Patrick Peterson, uh, Dante Hightower. There were so many. So, so many. There were some good uh, good offensive players, Few, too, but the way they yeah. ran the offenses, they weren't even – I'm taking zero risks today. That was – Yeah. It yeah. was Woody Hayes times two out there in the coaching tree. But yes, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Well, we're going to get into – how this specifically impacts not just the conference, but we're going to talk about Florida State and whether or not it impacts their leaving the conference coming up after we pay a couple bills, folks, because that has to happen. Now, let me make one thing clear to y'all, okay? Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time, and whether or not your team is in or out or around or whatever the case may be, I can guarantee you one thing. Game Time will have the tickets that you need available okay it shouldn't be frustrating to find a ticket last minute if there is ever a time where you're sitting there scratching your head saying oh man i just don't know what i'm gonna do i really want to be at the big game but i just don't know if i can pull it off you shouldn't have to worry because game time is here for you game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports music comedy and theater events near you with killer last minute deals all in prices and views from your seats directly on the app, plus their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Trust me, it does not matter what you're trying to go see. You can definitely make a way for it to happen with Game Time. So like I said, take away the guesswork in buying tickets. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Now, Brian, your eyes lit up like the 4th of July there toward the end of, of that segment when I said, does this affect Florida State leaving the conference? Now, now I'm going to say, me personally, I don't think it does. Only because, one reason, one reason only, the 12-team playoff is coming next year. And if this was a situation where we were sticking with four, oh, absolutely. I'd, I'd have no doubt in my mind that Florida State is, is ready to roll up and bounce up out of here immediately. But you have more of a finger on the pulse of the nose than I do, so tell me. What is the feeling? What is the sentiment? Is this a, hey, it's not an if, it's a win, and that win is coming sooner than you think because of this situation? I think it puts more gas on the fire. A uh, buddy of mine works for CBS 247 is uh, Bud Elliott, big Florida mm -hmm. State guy, has his own podcast. And he was talking about it on one of his shows. And he's like, well, this is the one bonus long term. Florida State fans will look at this as a positive because it gets them out of the ACC. And I'm like, wow. Mm. I was like, damn, bud. Let's... <laughs> I was like, that's a really a harsh way to look at getting left out of the playoff, but. Whatever. Very I think he's saying he's pretty tied in with boosters and people around the program. And I'm assuming I haven't talked to him, but he's talking about people are going to want to pony up with the grant of rights, figure out a way out of this. And, and Bud's a warrior, so he thinks a little differently than most people anyway. But the point is still the same. They feel like they didn't get enough oomph, and there's a big swipe. And I'm sure many people that watch the show feel as much that the ACC doesn't get the same treatment, excuse me, as the SEC. If it was four state SEC school, would this have happened? Yeah. What do you think? I mean, it's, it's I mean, a legitimate question. I mean, here's the thing, right? If you look at the way that this thing has has cut out, right? And I I hate to be this guy, but you kind of got to be that guy, this guy in this moment. Conference realignment is happening, yay or nay? Oh, yes, yeah. right? We all know it's happening. It's already here. 
conferences will realign next year, correct? Dang right. Okay. What conference is Michigan from? That would be the Big Ten. As of next year, what conference will Washington be from? Well, who? Washington. Oh, well, Big Ten. Okay. Uh, what conference is Alabama from? That would be the Southeastern. And as of next year, what conference will Texas be representing? That would also be the Southeastern. Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. Again, it's. I think it's so interesting and so perplexing to me that, in essence, the Big Ten is really a two-team conference. Let's just be real about this. Because when's the last time Penn State beat Ohio State or Michigan? Like when's seven the la- years ago. When's the last time Penn State beat both of those teams in the season? And yet they're all in the same, they're all in the same division of the Big Ten. So every year, Penn State's gonna get a chance to beat both of them every single year. And they don't. Time in, time out, time in, time out. Every time Penn State's not gonna do the job. So let's be very honest with ourselves. The Big Ten West, their champion will never win. Let's just be real. Let's be honest. Wisconsin, Minnesota, uh, Iowa, Purdue, stop it. Let's stop playing with ourselves here. The East will produce the champions every year that they have divisions. Once they get rid of divisions, congratulations. It's going to be the annual Michigan-Ohio State part two ball. Let's let's talk about it. And yet, nobody says, hmm, this Big Ten is weak. Why? Who's the fourth best team in the Big Ten, you would say? If I had to say, I mean, you could go with Iowa, but their offense is so offensive. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that you can really label it that way. It's just their defense is unreal. Okay. Iowa's defense is as good as it gets. But and and do you think Iowa Penn State are three and four, but they're awful on off. Both of them can't score. And do you think and do you think that either uh do you think that that Iowa could compete with the the uh the fourth best team in the ACC, which would be Clemson, or the third best, which would be NC State, or the second best, which would be Louisville, or the best, which would be Florida State. Would you see that as a game that, like, hey, this is – They offense- have to score a block punt or something like that, or else they would lose, like, 17 to 7. Their defense yeah. would do well, but they would probably lose in my, on, on a neutral field. I think all those teams are better than that. Okay. And yet nobody says that we can't – well, 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 in all fairness, we're not talking about Iowa because the, the Big Ten – Michigan was going to be in regardless. Well, let's look at the SEC for a second here because everybody's telling me that the SEC, is, that's the squad, that's them. So you got Georgia, you got Bama, you got – I'd even throw Missouri in the category of like that's They're a really good, good team. They're that's good. a really – hey, we stand on business, y'all. Shout out to Coach Drake, right? That's a good team. Sure. Their fourth best team would be who? Would you say – LSU. LSU? Jaden Daniels, I mean, gives you a chance in any game. That's yeah. a That's a – ridiculous player though okay so, Jay, but Jay I mean, defensively and and they choked in big moments this year Jay they daniels did. keeps you in big games but brian kelly is gonna do what every time he gets a chance that boy gonna wet that bed you're gonna need some rubber sheets if he if you got him in a big time matchup that so so i and then behind them you don't have any other really good teams i'm sorry to tell you who else out of sec is you really sit up here saying Oh boy, can't compete with them. Can't compete Ole with Miss them. is who they try to promote, but that Wayne Kiffin is like one and twenty against top ten teams or something. But he can he can coach offense, but their defenses always fail in the clutch moments when they play Bama and Georgia. Always. And that's my point exactly. It's not fair to me that the SEC gets the label of "Hey, we're better than you." Why? Based on what? But well, the head-to-head record don't count because you all beat conference bottom feeders. Wake Forest beat Vanderbilt, and you think that that's like Wake Forest is our banner team? Those boys won one conference game this year. And that one conference game that they won came because uh, Villu from Pitt forgot where the first down line was and started to go down to a slide early. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, that's a real powerhouse in our conference. What are we doing here? You know what I mean? I I just – I hate it when this becomes a situation – where it's don't let facts get in the way of a good narrative. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. If we are to punish Florida State for having an injured quarterback, I'm not mad at that. If you know for a fact, if they told me they had to try out Glenn, if there was a guarantee, like, can we know that there's no way to take make it? If there was even a good remote chance, because you and I both know how concussions work. If you have a, a terrible grade concussion to where, like, hey, that kid may be done for the year, 
you're not going to be out dressed out for the ACC championship game with all the lights and the noise and all the things going on. I around. thought the same thing. I thought like he could be an emergency guy or something, but they said he wasn't going to play. I don't know if that was precautionary or not, but he was out there dressed. So he, yeah. he had to have been at least cognizant Trust of what was rolling. You I, know what I, mean? I took I took video of him on the sideline warming up when he first came out. And so to me, I just don't think that it's fair, especially because if he was good enough to dress out, if he was good enough to, again, for those of you who don't know, one of the big things about concussions, especially the worst grade ones, they produce high sensitivity to light and sound. Yeah, you can't put those big bright lights at night. You can't. It would go nuts. You, yeah, that work. It immediately, you're, you, it, everything would start to go a little blurry. And next thing you know, the kids is literally maybe throwing up, falling out, may just feel woozy. May, you know. Yeah, it's not fun. It's not fun. So, with that in mind, if he was there for that game, even if he didn't play, whether it was precautionary, whether it was because he didn't feel good enough, whether the lights did bother him just a tad bit, the fact that they felt comfortable having him there tells me within a month, he was going to be back. He was going to be back. And, and so to see this go down the way it did, it's, it's just really unfortunate. And to see that the conference is now taking a hit because of this, because it is an unfair whack to the conference, but this is also why I say the conference in and of itself needs to have, I'm sorry to tell y'all, Paul Feinbaum is an a SEC propagandist. That is what the man is. He's good. Who is the ACC's propagandist? Who is the mouthpiece really? that goes on TV and will beat the drum regardless? They will spin anything. Oh, you know, multiple SEC teams have multiple losses, but well, they cannibalized each other. They were so good. ACC has multiple losses. There's nobody separating themselves from the pack here. There's just a bunch of good teams. There's no great team. Come on. Come on. Let's let's stop playing. Let's knock this. Let's knock all the, the, the goofy stuff off. Let's let facts run this thing and not narrative. Let's let facts run it. And that's my big thing. If, if we are looking at facts running this conversation, I'm fine with that. But the minute we get narrative running the conversation, that's where I'm always going to have a problem with it. We got to pay some bills and then we're going to get you out of here, Brian. Folks, thank you all so very much for tuning in to today's episode of Locked on ACC. And let me let you in on something, okay? Brian and I are doing our best to get the job done for you today. But if you need the job done right, you need to go to LinkedIn.com. Trust me, they help you find the most qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster and for free. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the professionals that you want to talk to and cut through a lot of the clutter and noise out there in the job market. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion. Yes, you heard that right. More than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates to talk to. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making that process even easier and quicker. Although I'm going to tell you, I'm a technical recruiter. Leave the job writing, leave the job description writing to us, but that's neither here nor there. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. So, Brian, we're we're about to get out of here, but I think I think to sum this thing up, first thing first, you do agree with the, the committee's decision. It makes sense to you to have left Florida State out of the top five. Are we are we correct there? I mean the top four, yeah. Or I mean, top four, rather. Yeah, top four. Probably. I just don't think being at your third string quarterback is is a good thing. Um, we don't know for sure. Probably I think Tate probably play, but he didn't exactly wow me in the Florida game either. So Absolutely. it just sucks that it, I, I feel so bad for Jordan Travis because I'd heard so many good things about him. Yeah. For forget the football, but like yeah, as a just human, a young man. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, you want those guys representing in the playoff, but it, you know, I digress. Yeah. The, the biggest thing for me was him saying, I'm sorry, and I wish I broke my leg earlier so you could see that this team was more than a quarterback. Oh, oh man. No, I, that's pretty deep right there, brother. <laughs> uh, my my heart, 
I hate quarterbacks. Okay. I'm a defensive tackle, former defensive tackle. I hate quarterbacks with every fiber of my being. And that one right there, that one right there, just you know, that that's legit, man. That gets you under that third rib on that left hand side. That gets you right there every time. Um, and with that being said, this, like you said, adds gas to the fire, adds a couple big oh. timbers to the fire of getting Florida State out of the ACC. I don't think there's any question. Mm. Their boosters and the people around them, I mean, they didn't want to be in anyway. The mm. AD hasn't exactly hinted at it. He's basically thrown rocks at their window, you know, that says ACC on it. Mm-hmm. They're just trying to find a way to get out. So mm-hmm. uh, at some point, somebody got to hand over a lot of cash, though. Yeah. You can be mad all you want. That's still the bottom line. I just wonder if that ante goes up because the perception is the ACC doesn't get any breaks from the selection committee. That's yeah. that's my take. And I have a feeling that some of my friends that follow went to Florida State boosters feel the same. All righty. Well, you heard it here first, folks. We throwing logs on the fire today. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I hope that some folks can walk away with this with a little bit more solace knowing that, hey, the Locked On Knows guy understands we're having one more episode to discuss the omission and then – we got to move on and talk about these bowl games because, believe it or not, the ACC still did get a ton of very interesting bowl games and bowl matchups going forward, as well as talking about the portal party in terms of who's staying, who's going, who's going where. It's the Wild Wild West or the Wild Wild Atlantic, as they say in, <laughs> in today's world. So we'll get into all that and more on the next episode of Locked on ACC. Till next time, folks.